Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to episode 1 of Fightcraft, the Minecraft fighting game plugin series. In this series, we're going to create a plugin which I have named Fightcraft. It's going to be a game, and it's going to be similar to some of the other games that I've done. I haven't done any games in a while, so I'm really excited to kind of work on a big project. But essentially, the idea of the game is that you will join an arena with other players and you'll just fight them and you'll get points based on doing different things like kill streaks and you know maybe other challenges that could possibly show up these points will put you on the leaderboard for the server so you wanna you know play as much as you can so that you can get up to the higher rank and then this will also the points can be spent on items and power-ups and abilities and effects for when you actually go into the game so you can enter the game with some armor or some or a sword or something that will help you to do better in the game so we're going to write this and it's gonna be first uh, the game of course which we'll write in bucket for Minecraft then there's going to be a website component that will display user data and leaderboards. So you can actually go onto the website to see how you're doing and how everyone's doing. And then there will be, of course, this will be backed by a database. So we're going to write, we're going to expose a little web API so that the plugin can actually communicate scores and kill streaks and kills and deaths and KDRs to the server which can then be displayed on the website and then of course it'll be persistent so uh, this is going to be similar to that uh, banning plugin we made that banning utility that actually had a website as well so you could go on and see uh, if you got banned and why you got banned it's going to be similar to that but this time we're making a game instead of a utility so this episode is going to be a pretty short one. I just wanted to first explain the game, and then I want to just set up the plugin so that it would run, you know, get a plugin.yml, get a main class, and then I want to, want to write a special player class, which I'll explain why, and I'll explain what's going to be in there um, in just a minute. So I guess we'll go ahead and open up Eclipse and get started. And my goal is, this is going to take a while, of course, because there are three parts, and like the banning series, it's going to involve multiple platforms and multiple languages, and then this is also going to be, I think, a bigger project than that, because there's a lot more that goes into making a game than just a utility. But then at the end, I want to have a live stream and actually test it out live with anyone who's interested in joining, which is it worked out great in the past when I've had them. Great, so we got a clips open here. I'm just gonna create the project. And again, there's not gonna be anything too interesting yet, but we have to get the project um, set up. Or, I'm sorry, it was called Fight Cry. We have to get the project set up here um, so that we can actually start working. We'll go ahead and create the, oops, we'll go ahead and create the package, me.pogo.fightcraft. And then we'll create the main class, fightcraft. All right, so we have the main class. There it is. And we also just want to quickly make the plugin.yml. And this is all that we're going to do today. Um, but now, once we get set up, we can actually do all kinds of things. We're going to add commands, and we're going to add... Um, all of the listeners and tons of managers and stuff and then we have to be able to communicate asynchronously with the web API so it's gonna be a pretty big uh, event pretty big plugin um, and what else do we need we need author pogo and we need the main alright so I think that's all we need to get it to run and then, of course, in here, we want to extend Java plugin. And, oh yeah, of course, I forgot to add craft bucket to my library, to my class path. So there's that. And now let's import it. Good. All right, so we have this set up. I'm not going to do anything in there yet. But the one thing that I do want to make is we're going to make a game player class 
This is going to represent someone who is playing the game. And first of all, we're going to store an, int uh, an instance of the player, of the bucket version of player, org.bucket.entity.player. And before you go to the comments section and say it's bad to keep instances of players like that, what we're going to do with this plugin is we're going to say that when the player joins, we're going to add, we're going to create a new game player for them, and we're going to stick them into an array list. And whenever the player leaves, we're going to take it out of the array list. And what we'll do is if the server stops and starts again, or if it's reloaded, then the array list will be cleared. And I can put a clear line in there just to double, just to make sure. But what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we remove these instances responsibly. So I'm not too worried about the player because we're going to instantiate game player when they join, and then we're going to remove game player when they leave. And that one instance of game player will be passed around. So first when they join, it'll be created. And then if they join a game, it'll be put into some kind of array list for that particular game. And then when the game's over, the list will be cleared. Um, and then, uh, you know, they'll come back out. And the reason why I want to do it like this is because there's going to be a bunch of things that happen here. The first is going to be, you know, of course, this is a wrapper for the player class. So we're going to have a player in here. But the other thing or I guess a couple of other things. First of all, packets. We're probably going to end up using packets. I hope that we do. So if and when we use packets, I can write a couple of utility methods in here, or we can write a couple of utility methods in here that will make sending packets easy. Uh, and then, you know, it would just be super easy because we have the instance of game player. We just send him a packet. And then the other reason is because of the database-related stuff. So we're actually going to store in here, like, private int kills private int deaths, and I guess that's all we'll, or I, we also need points, of course. So what we'll do here is we'll have that, and when the player joins, we're going to retrieve the data from the database. And when something changes, then we're going to, well, I'm going to write a couple of setter methods, and the setter methods are actually going to also set the data in the database. And I'm going to figure out some way to optimize it because we might need to play with it a little bit to make sure that it's not sending, you know, requests to get data and set data every second. We might just say after the game happens, it's going to do a batch uh, upload of everything. I'm not completely sure yet. So really quick, uh, we're going to write some getters. Um, and we want to be really careful because uh, we, we do need setters for these. Uh, or we'll say, we'll write like modify points. And we'll just say this.points plus equals mod. And then we need to say update database. I feel like it's just easier to say modify points because you're generally not going to be setting them to a specific number. You're just going to be adding or removing whether they purchase an item to use or they gain points from, you know, a kill or something. So then we have uh, get kills. So we return kills. Public void. Uh, add. We'll just say like add kill because it's only going to be that's going to add one kill when they kill someone. So it's just easy. We're being extra safe here with this. And then, of course, update the database. Finally, deaths. Which will return deaths, public void set deaths. Or uh, we'll just say add death. Because, again, this will only be called when the player dies. And it'll happen one time. And then the last thing that we want is get KDR, which I guess should probably be a double. So the kill death ratio is the ratio of kills to deaths, and I think it's just kills over death deaths. So you obviously want that number to be higher because that means you have more kills than deaths, and that would be a good thing. There's obviously not going to be a setter for this because it's computed based on the kills and deaths, but that'll be important. First of all, it'll be on the website, but then also there will be some sort of command to look up data, and we'll probably also use the scoreboard so that it'll display kills, deaths, KDR, and points. It'll display all of this information in the scoreboard of the player when they're in the game. 
So I guess that's all for this episode. We set up the plugin so it should run when we export it. And we got this game player class set up. And obviously it's not completely finished. It doesn't do anything with the database. But we also don't have the database set up yet. So that's just fine. Uh, going from here, we're probably going to... First, we have to write a bunch of the different manager-related stuff. Uh, I think the next thing we're probably going to do is set up maps. So there will be different maps. And then games, because when you join a game, you can actually vote for the map. And whichever map gets the most votes will win. So we're going to have that work out like that. And I think everything is going to be great. So, as always, subscribe if you want to see more comment with what you want to see in this plugin. I have a lot of stuff planned, but if you have any great ideas, let me know. And if you like this video, click the like button. I will see you guys soon with some more coding. Bye for now.